keep my presentation brief. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, especially because I was involved only in a very small part of the project. And the idea of my task was to present our findings in a way uh, that could be even more understandable for uh, non-lawyers <clears throat> to come up with a kind of graphical toolbox that would help a person to quickly identify what are the legal relations. And that's uh, what you see here. Um, well, the, 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 the first stage that I uh, uh, approached was the, uh, to uh, identify what are the, let's say, technical, what are the uh, subjects and actors of uh, involved in the project and what are their actions, what are their uh, relations. Uh, and this is what you can see on this graph uh, without looking at the colored leg rectangles yet. So we can see these um, two clouds, which represent basically two main sources of data. Uh, the repositories being the sources of publications and databases being the sources of uh, other uh, types of research data. As, as, we, as Professor Weber said, we uh, adopted this broad concept of, of research data. And we could say that we have two types of actors here. We have a user of open air uh, infrastructure, but we also have uh, the open air plus infrastructure as such, which, uh, which is a kind of a uh, robot, a kind of a machine, uh, but it's generally it's operated by, uh, uh, by, by humans. And these two actors do something, something with, the, with the publications and third-party third third databases. And these activities are represented by uh, all these arrows which are uh, which are tagged. Uh, so let's briefly from, from the left side, uh, which is uh, more or less the most uh, um, straightforward way of using uh, the Open Air Plus infrastructure, that is the user consults uh, the uh, databases of publications to be able to uh, access the publications, which uh, in technical terms means that the publication uh, is being copied on the, uh, on the user's computer. And it also involves copying metadata for the uh, publication. Uh, the user might, might get involved in um, um, supplying some data to the uh, open air infrastructure because the user is invited to edit the metadata uh, and add links to, uh, between uh, publications and, and research data. Uh, this, this can be done by, uh, by a user, by a human, but it's also being done by robots which are designed to work inside the open air infrastructure, which uh, do some data mining and they automatically uh, infer and resolve some information about uh, publications and, and data sets. And this is represented here by this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, part of the diagram. Uh, and also we can have, <coughs> well, the, let's say the result of this, all these activities is that uh, metadata is being copied from one uh, database to uh, another and certain external sources are being linked together. And if we, now we can look at the colored rectangles and you have a, uh, let's say a legend here on the right side. There are four different uh, types of rights which are included in copyright, um, uh, in, in copyrights and there are two different types of rights uh, which are part of database sui, sui generis rights which are, to a different extent, involved. Uh, they might be infringed, or at least they are somehow applicable when uh, each of these activities uh, are being uh, undertaken. And <coughs> if, we, uh, if we represent the, the whole relationship within the Open Air Plus project uh, in this way, uh, we come up to the conclusion that more or less uh, such rights are uh, being relevant when such activities are 
being undertaken and some activities might involve only one type of uh, of, um, uh, of, of right. But what you can see is that there is no single activity which might be undertaken without taking into consideration uh, either copyright or database uh, right. And there is also a kind of a table uh, which goes a bit more into detail. It explains what exactly triggers the applicability of uh, a specific right. Sometimes uh, we might conclude that uh, some simple activities do not trigger applicability of, uh, of, a, uh, of a certain um, exclusive uh, right. To some extent we might discuss whether some activities are exempted from the uh, monopoly uh, because of some exemptions like the scientific use uh, exemption already mentioned here. But then again, the scope of this exemption is not clear and it's not harmonized um, uh, within the, the, the whole uh, EU. So there is a very uh, big area of legal uh, uncertainty. And that's also applicable, that also holds for the database rights, which are, uh, which are explained in the, in the second ta table. So, well, you, you probably know the saying that the picture is worth a thousand words. Now I gave more or less a thousand words about a picture, but I can make it even more, try to make it even more simpler that, uh, uh, well, if you are an RPG fan, you might follow what I want to say here, is that, well, Engaging into using of data and publications is a kind of a perilous journey. So you have to prepare for it. And not only should you have an elf with a bow and a dwarf with an axe in your team, but probably a, a lawyer with a um, legal toolbox uh, to, to that might become handy and, and might help you to reach your destination safely. Um, and, uh, well, okay, to keep my part short, I have just some conclusions which uh, I want to highlight, which are, which are especially um, important for, uh, from my perspective, is that, well, my conclusion is that we simply do not have a sufficient scope of research freedom within the exceptions granted by, uh, by the law, so, so the, the, the legislators should focus on that, and, uh, and all other uh, solutions are only a kind of, well, the, they are certainly useful. You should uh, use Creative Commons license.